Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, oh, take that hello. midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source and basically anything we find interesting. I'm Vin and that is hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Aw, I am doing very well. And I just want to thank Jordan for filling in for me last week while I was on holiday. That was very nice, Jordan. Thank you so much. You did a great job. <laughs> yeah, I'm short, angered, and confused people. I'm like, what is this? Aw. <laughs> Who's this? Well, he kept you company, which I was happy about. <laughs> and happy, happy new year to everyone. That's wow, a thing. Yeah. That so happened, this is the it? first. Yeah, it did. This is the first LWW over the new year. <laughs> wow. I don't know, man. We've come uh, a long way, Vin. <laughs> it, it, it's 2022, but we're, we're still in that haze of everything. We're just like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the odometer ticked over a bit, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's the weekend? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know. It's, not it's weekend still. Now. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it takes about a month to sink in because until you write your first check, then you realize that it's 20, it'll be 2021. <laughs> Somebody that writes a check. Uh, that, that, hmm. <laughs> Only once in a while, but sometimes you have to. <laughs> so in my world, in my world, um, I have to remember to put the right date in the MP3 ID three tags. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> That's really the only time I'm typing out a number. But I was playing around after the show. Um, you might might keep track of uh, some of the stuff I picked up. I did a video on a piece of 80s technology that I was just completely fascinated with uh, from a company called Aphex. Uh, they really like higher end uh, studio stuff, you know, not audiophile things. And they made a thing called a compeller. And it's still made today. And mm. it's fascinating to me, and it was, because it's genuinely an analog computer inside of the box that does equalization, not EQ, um, compression, leveling, and um, what am I trying to think about? Compression, leveling, and limiting. But it does it automatically. It, it reads the signal, and the way it works is very fascinating. And it is completely mm. transparent, which is also fun. There, there's much legend and reality to back it up of studios that bought them, you know, cause you had compression, like I have, it's not doing anything. And they were calling up saying it's broken. I'm like, no, it's that transparent. And you'd have to put it on meters to see that it was bringing the overall volume up for mm. everything very clearly. These are typically used in, um, post-production movies, film, TV, cable companies, satellite, stuff like that. But I happen to have one because, you know, Jeff at Guitar Center. His name's not really Jeff. That's just the guy from all the <laughs> stores that are linked to because Jeff Jeff is a curse and a blessing. Sometimes Jeff will radically overprice something and he doesn't know what it is. And other times it'll be criminally underpriced because Jeff doesn't know what it is. This is one of those cases. I'm like, I was gonna buy <laughs> one of those to play with it. Me being me. If I have something long enough, I'm gonna find a use for it, no matter what. So last week, mm -hmm. last week after the show, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm gonna try this out. So what I did is I wired the compeller into the studio DAW to master mm -hmm. the show. Because when we're recording, we're recording at a much lower level, so I have a lot of wiggle room to adjust things in post-production. So I'm feeding this out to the analog compeller, and you can see it there with the dynamic verification gate. It's reading, it's matching. That's a multi-segmented LED. It's displaying everything that it's doing to get the level up to, and it ended up to 14 lofts is roughly where I got it. The only downside is you got to do it in real time. Mm. And there's no like hard settings on it because it's analog gear. You know, I'm back here like twiddling dials. So earlier this week, I continued playing around with this chain. Just to add something to do when I had some free time. And I've, I've figured out a dial a luff system using a meter and the way I have it configured in with the RME card in the box. So if you're unfamiliar with luffs, if you're doing a podcast and you don't know what luffs are, Stop doing a podcast mm -hmm. until you get read up on that and you figure out where you need to be. Or even if you're doing YouTube videos, YouTube wants 14 lefts. That's the overall loudness for a show. So you're not blowing anyone's ears out and they can hear you depending on the program material. And uh, it was very successful. I'm going to be using it after this show. Where I can turn dials and like, okay, I want 14 lefts for YouTube. I want, uh, you know, depending on mono or stereo, I want 16 lefts or 19 lefts for um, a podcast and have it print that 
run it through that and everything sounds great. And it does a better job of what I typically do because there's a couple of ways to do it. We get done. This is two person show. So I got Jill's audio. I got my audio. And sometimes, you know, I might get a little off mic like that or Jill might get really loud and, but you want that normalized. You don't want it clipping anything like that. So you can ride the faders and do that and post-production just automate it. Or I use a script called, um, I think it's just called Level Voice. It's uh, mm. a little script for Audacity. It's an Iqua script. I modified it a little bit because um, it's really set for like really aggressive. You know, if you've recorded something where somebody's really loud and another person's really quiet to fix that, I've toned it down a little bit. It does compression and leveling. It doesn't sound, you guys are going to love this. It doesn't sound organic. It doesn't sound warm. Uh, it sounds very digital, which is very irritating to me because of all the trouble I go through. Uh, so yeah, that <laughs> that's what I've been doing, Jill. Also, we got a new interface yeah. uh, for interfacing Linux. It's a USB interface. It was something made in the last two cool. years. Shock among shocks, right? It's not Firewire. And um, I get a great deal on that. <laughs> Trackmania tracks are up for this week. I want to thank each and every person, even the people who showed up and tried in spirit but couldn't get things working for track mania we did the practice <laughs> last night which is the server is officially up for tuesday so you have until today yesterday up until friday where we're going to test our skills this is we're all beginners we're all still getting around tracks and uh Nubin was making incredible progress that's what i love seeing most because we have people awesome. who are coming in and they're <laughs> like man i'm just trying to get around the track but you see, <laughs> while we're going around track, Nubin was getting like 33 second improvements in time. I mean, just seeing that progress. I watched Strider do it um, Sunday because I was like, hey, Strider, weren't you playing this? Strider was like, I will play, watch. And he got in. And <laughs> I, I just spectated Strider going around. He got some great times. <laughs> we're all beginners at this easily accessible game. It is Hot Wheels where you bounce around. Um, I think Basewick joined in last night he just bought the game he was watching us play when we were live streaming hop right in he's like this is like rocket league but with racing which it is it's incredibly cheap but uh we'll be doing a points match this friday at 7 30 everybody's welcome to join in if you want the top three places will each receive a free game that will be completely random because i'm cleaning out these 17 pages of unredeemed keys mm. from my humble bundle so there's a little bit of incentive. What we're not looking for, if you are a competent, you know, at best, <laughs> I, I used to be reasonably good 15 years ago, uh, driving around track mania tracks. Uh, and then, you know, after 14, 13 years off, um, I'm just trying to learn if, if you're a pro at this, you know, you, this is, you, you don't want to show up and make fun of clowns is what I'm saying. Like if you're doing like massive labs, yeah. this is not going to be, we're, we're, we're learning how to do this and uh, we welcome you to pop in at least and say hello. So we'll be live doing that at oh. seven 30. If you want to do that. It, and, was, uh, it was fun watching uh, you and Foxy and, and Alan and Nubbin, you know, racing each other. That was cool. Right? Who's, <laughs> who's got the best car? I, this is a trick question. Cause I got the best car. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's it's the the one we mainly see when you're playing That's for the why live it's the stream. Best <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one no one can compete with my Hello Kitty car. Yeah. It's the number yeah, 6. It looks Kitty. like um I call it skating. Arthur said he's going to pop in on Friday, so that'll be cool. He just wants I'm actually going to Oh, I'm actually going to be at Disneyland that day. <laughs> right on. Uh I Arthur and uh, I've, I went through and set up a the server and the tracking for this. Cause I noticed the earth has got records on a couple of tracks that I don't think any of us were able mm. to beat yet. Oh, I, I bet he's, so, he's good. <laughs> Strider has got some records. So, uh, yeah, Michael. Yeah. Joined, Matthew has been playing a lot. Joined, um, <laughs> Barbara was attempting. Yeah. Joined, but he could get something set up and, uh, yeah. Alan did really well. I, didn't win a lot, but I, I, we're just there to have fun. So yeah, we'll see you Friday on that. Good. That, that was a long intro, mm -hmm. Jill. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And we have a big news story uh, starting us off too. <laughs> maybe, maybe because, okay. <laughs> Let me just say it like this. I said this in the, um, before, before we started recording. I was watching CES for the Intel announcement because I wanted to know about the ARC. 
I wanted the dates. I wanted the numbers. Jill, we got dates and numbers, technically, but. Yeah. It was uh, dates and numbers for laptop <laughs> parts that. I, yes. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone. I don't think I'm alone on behalf of literally everyone. Where's the information on the desktop GPUs? Hmm. Yeah, we we need more of that. <laughs> I, you know, like I was telling you earlier, I think a lot of this has to do with the, uh, you know, the uh, it's it's the hardware shortage. Their issue with that, and they're selling mostly to OEMs. So buying pre-built systems, and in this case, buying laptops, is is the quickest route to getting these parts. <laughs> Just seems to be a thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I'm looking at a lot of this stuff and yeah, a bunch of laptop stuff. If that's your thing, hyperencode looks neat because the announcement leaked the day before and at the very bottom of the announcement, it's going to be optimized for DaVinci Resolve. That's really got my attention. Yay. It really yeah. did. And there was an in the announcement, they mentioned like Death Stranding, you know, Norman Reedus and the Creepy Fetus uh, is going to get, uh, what do they call it? The ZSS, which is their version of Fidelity well, FX, AKA DLSS. Yes. Yay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the deep link hyperencode working with result. That's kind of interesting, Jill, mm -hmm. because it's going to work with the CPU and GPU. I mean, it's going to work with your Intel CPU and, uh, only your yeah. Intel GPU. Yeah, so that 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 was like actually my favorite take takeaway was the Deep Link hyperencode because it, it's really awesome to be able to combine your discrete and onboard uh, GPUs, you know, rendering together for a faster rendering of a video uh, stream, whether it be in, in DaVinci Resolve or in the future in Blender. That that was that was a big deal in this announcement. Probably one of the best things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true, but it's going to come, it'll come to our, our home PCs. <laughs> Your Intel home it's PCs. It's just going to take time. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. Yeah, we probably won't get get an Intel discrete GPU uh, mixing with an AMD no. APU anytime not, not soon. Not even a little bit. So. <laughs> uh, okay, now here's something. Here's something that I thought was really fascinating. Uh, the, uh, it wasn't the announcement I was looking for, but there were clearly some things that were planned to be announced at CES that were not. Mm -hmm. And I say this because I was watching the um, PC World coverage. You know, they do the thing we do where, you know, we just live stream the event and we talk over the important bits. And when they got done, they did the wrap up and they were, you know, just having a whole thing. And Gordon was asked a question by one of the other members and he's like, Oh, hang on. Let me go through this announcement. Cause there's some things that I, we can't talk about. And like that didn't mm. end up getting him out. He didn't want to violate any NDAs okay. or anything. So I'm like, yeah. hmm, what's going on there? But creators and gamers, we're in desperate need of GPUs. Intel, you should know this. Everyone should know this. Mm -hmm. In 2022, <laughs> you got to think about it, man. Like teenage Vin, teenage Vin should be able to go out and get a used 2060 from a couple of years ago for like 150, 200 bucks in 2022. Yeah, this should, absolutely. <laughs> this was absolutely how the system worked up until three years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a look. A 2060 right now, a used 2060 on eBay, not a super 2060 sold. We're not talking about asking what they sell for $500. Yeah. All day yeah, my long. My 1080 Ti is, is over 500 too. <laughs> And That's I know everyone's going to bring up AMD. AMD makes a great desktop and gaming card. They do. But when you get into professional stuff, when you get in like Blender, yeah. Resolve, like Blender, just like, no, we're working on, I think it's called Cycles, that'll bring back support for the AMD side of things. But like Resolve, Resolve, you have to install the binary AMD drivers, which are just a nightmare to deal with with anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Absolutely. we need this player three <laughs> Intel. We need it. And that's what I'm waiting on because I'm sitting back like I I have no problems getting off Team Green. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I was talking to you before uh, we went live. It's like I would like to be able to stick together a budget for 2022 if that's going to involve me having to buy something to replace in VN code, be it an external encoder. But I need to understand like what type of price in the ballpark, you know, NVIDIA yeah. during CES. Just, Absolutely laughed at everyone they're like we have a even more expensive card that you can't buy than they said something about what was it a 2050 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a 2050. Yeah, that was their <laughs> their big announcement. Two hundred and forty dollar <laughs> twenty. That, yeah, again, this is just every. I think everyone just laughs when we see announcements for new GPUs because they what you can't get it. Doesn't matter. Why release the sixty ninety? Might as well because it doesn't exist. So yeah, save us, save us. Then yeah. oh yes, hang on. I did catch the <laughs> Nvidia announcement because I was cringing every time they called it the uh, like ninety whatever. 3090 tie. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know. Every time I heard tie, I'm like, no, I've, I've been hearing it for years as TI. It, it, that bothered me. Nvidia, <laughs> but, no, I don't care how hard you try to push this. No one's calling it tie. It's the TI. No, it's um, not a tie fighter. <laughs> you see, this is the missed opportunity from Intel because then Intel thing, and I was like, Intel, how come, how come you didn't on your feet jump on this and like, here's the new Intel tie fighter? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, oh, and, come on. Uh, yeah, the other cool thing about having having another, you know, GPU, another competitor, until we want that GPU, is that it'll be on Linux, the true open source video card. <laughs> so GPU yeah, the driver's running stack. open yeah. source. Yeah, because Intel is so good with op open sourcing all their... their um, you know, uh, soft software for their hardware. So for us Linux users, so that's going to be cool. It'll be even more open source than the AMD drivers are on Linux. <laughs> so let's talk about, uh, the root file system in Dolphin, because I know that Linus get had a problem with that, didn't he? Oh, yes. So, <laughs> Absolutely, Ben. So this has been one of the most requested features for KDE. Root file operations are finally coming to the Dolphin file manager, and we all rejoice. So it's been almost five years in the making, and PolicyKit uh, support and KIO, or the KDE input-output library, was finally merged. So this allows Dolphin and other KDE apps that use the KIO library to create, move, copy, trash, and delete files in non-user-owned locations. And th this is just awesome because that's 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 been one of my biggest complaints about Dolphin. And there's been workarounds to to run it in root, but kind of a pain. So it's 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 nice that we're getting this uh, default now native. And the support will arrive in Frameworks 5.91 in a little over a month. So, and you can test it out in KDE Neon Unstable or OpenSUSE Krypton or your favorite distros Unstable KDE packages. And you can file bugs on the Frameworks KIO if things don't work right. And they really want, would love to hear from you. So I want to make sure that uh, root access in your in your file manager is working right. <laughs> and thank you to our Theron for submitting this news to our show suggestions in our Discord for Patreons. That is awesome. very much welcome. Now, the easiest mm -hmm. way to get around this, I have found, is to, to install Thunar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I use MLFM or Worker, or, yeah, <laughs> any other file manager, PC Man FM. <laughs> and even though, I mean, a, a nice big warning label. I always say, I mean, if you if you if you know how to access something to that, just let, won't let somebody do it. Don't, don't fight the end user, you know. Yeah. Good to see bunch of improvements and uh, KDE keep on being KDE now. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about something that um, I downloaded to make fun of and ended up liking. <laughs> Yay. Cool, then. Because <laughs> I thought this was, you know, it would be a good joke for the show. And I'm talking about like a desktop firewall. And maybe people of a certain age, when we think of like um, desktop firewalls, we're thinking, what was that popular one on Windows that, everyone installed immediately in like the early 2000s. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm spacing zone on the name alarm. because zone, zone alarm. Under. Oh, like yes. Alan, it was something Thank along you, those Katana lines. Thank you, Katana and Alan. Um, yeah. I, I thought, hey, 
you know what? It'd be fun I'm, to make a joke about this. And like, we finally have parity true. with Windows. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about saving IO and Portmaster. It's free open source application. Put you back in charge all over your computer's network connections. Completely free to download. I downloaded it. It's a Debian file. It only needed like one or two dependencies to get up and running on Debian 11. This thing is slick. It was all I can say about it. It mean it installed. I launched the daemon and it will pull up and tell you all of the applications that you're running and you can mm-hmm. drill down into everything, anything relating to your network activity. It is there. And I mean, it names out applications. Amazing. And it's like how many processes are running, how much data, what IP is this thing using? Easy to navigate, easy to block anything. I mean, this doesn't feel like programmer UI. I mean, this is a slick. This thing is polished. Well, I can even yeah. force a security in us. Uh, source code available on GitHub. Now, I did a little digging around because when I was looking at this, I'm like, something's on. I mean, you just can't give something like this away. I mean, this, this should be twenty nine ninety five or something like that. Their business model is completely like freemium. I mean, all the like local privacy features, completely free, going to remain so. I mean, they go into the spiel. They're funded by mm-hmm. their VPN service. Like, hey, we want to keep things secure yeah. on Linux. And for Safing. you Linux user, you mm-hmm. don't want to set up. An, uh, I don't. I got a relatively expensive box back here with all that built in. You know, it's a dedicated quad core ARM system. But for individual PCs on a network, for your home network, something like this, I actually would recommend it. And it's just really slick. I mean, the interface is so simple. Yeah. Even a Linus could figure it out. Not that one. <laughs> Absolutely, Vin. <laughs> Absolutely. And I tested the, the dot .deb on Ubuntu Mate 20.04.3 LTS, and it ran beautifully, even though this is actually, you know, alpha software. It, it ran great. And um, my system was running Discord and Vivaldi at the time, but it, it did fine. A snap D popped up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, snaps, because uh, um, that's the machine I use for all my testing and, and for running uh, testing snaps for the show. And it detected it. It detected uh, rust running and a few other things. But everything, you know, the per, it has per app blocking settings mm-hmm. and rules that you can set for each each app that are sweet. You know, instead of having to do this on the command line, it's it's just so convenient I mean, having it, it is, in a GUI. It's right there. I mean, it kind of reminds me yeah. of what I've seen from like Open Snitch and stuff like that, with that functionality built in. Oh, like, hey, this yeah. thing's trying to do a thing. I don't know. What, what do you think about this? And the presentation's excellent. Mm-hmm. It is. I mean, it just yeah, feels like a genuine commercial product that I would give. And why I say this in the thing, I'm like, I feel like mm-hmm. using UFW is cheating, but that's what I use for everything. It, <laughs> deal with it because it's so easy to use but for a nice slick intuitive firewall that's just by default settings going to keep most people out of trouble mm-hmm. go for it i mean yeah 100 go check yeah. it out all the links are going to be in the show notes. github page if you want to do that they got uh rpms they got dev packages it's available for windows and uh, mac as well so yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to put this on my essential list of tools to install with every new Linux distro. I would. <laughs> I've already put this on the list. Like I have this is m- awesome. zero <laughs> issues. Now, I'm sure tomorrow or, you know, by the end of the show, it'll come out that this eats computers at night when they're trying to sleep or something like that. Oh, but yeah. Until that happens. <laughs> Go check it out. I think our theory even popped on. I was like, wow, that's slick. I'm like, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. You didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. So good on them. Now. There was a special mm-hmm. time. There was a special time <laughs> in the mid 2000s. And like most people back in the day, I partook in this special time. I'm talking about Compiz. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I, it was interesting. <laughs> and tell your children that you used to be mesmerized and amazed by wiggly windows and cubes spinning around on the desktop to the point where you would invite yes. friends over. I'm like, come here, look at this. I go, I go, And um, yeah, that was the thing. You know, I, I enjoyed playing around with Compass like everybody else. I didn't use it for a long time, but I cut all the effects up to 11 that one time. Spun the cubes, jiggled a window, closed it. It caught on fire and it melted. Then I cut all that <laughs> nonsense off because it's me, man. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, somebody missed that so much. They have brought back flaming windows 
as a gnome extension so you can relive those dark, dark days and burn yeah. my windows. is not <laughs> a thing. It, it, it's just so awesome. Disintegrate your apps with Nile. <laughs> let's get, let's see. There it is. Classic. Oh, there's actually a couple of different ways to go about doing this. That, yes. That, that's your classic. Now, I, <laughs> here, here's what I want to say about this. Wasn't terribly like awed by that. Then I saw the Matrix one and I'm like, oh, come on. That's kind of neat. I mean, you're dead inside yeah, if you that's don't like my, that. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Right? What do you <laughs> Definitely. Think? Yeah. So, you know, I actually still use uh, wobbly windows. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm old. I still like using wobbly windows. But what's really cool is that with um, just installing a GNOME extension, you can have, have all these different effects. And uh, I think... Uh, Ven uh, is probably going to enjoy the fire <laughs> once again, and I'm sure that makes him happy. No. But I really like the Matrix and TV effects. That was cool, you know, having the Matrix numbers uh, fall down when you close the window and uh, the TV turning off effect. This is actually really cool. And another reason, um, this is actually better, honestly, than doing it originally in Compass because this takes up less memory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's much much more memory efficient because it's just a gnome extension so very nice <laughs> have fun with this this is uh yeah we, it just popped up yesterday on our radar <laughs> it's in, in the news feed from the past <laughs> so if you got gnome up and running and uh you, you like javascript gnome extensions because this is javascript and that's a gnome extension and then install it, set it up <laughs> Again, mm -hmm. I think the Matrix thing, it, it's, it's just kind of cool. But I, I was, come on. I mean, this was like back in the, I immediately thinking all the way back into 2000s when I was running KDE, not GNOME, but uh, mm -hmm. why was I running KDE? Not entirely, but in no small part because it shipped with the uh, KDE screensaver had the uh, Matrix one built in. Yeah. So you could have and that's like a go-to for me. Oh, <laughs> it was back in the days. Remember screensavers? Ah, some people oh, still yes. want them now. You got to re respect people who still run screensavers because they really hate the environment i'm <laughs> just like man so go check it out it's burn my windows you know what maybe you could be a little bit malicious with it you could install it in somebody's <laughs> pc and not tell them. <laughs> but you run the risk of them liking it so who knows about that now yeah <laughs> i was thinking about jill when i across <laughs> this and yes I, I see this all the time. I'm a little bit fascinated because, hey, I'm not going to give anybody any static. I'm following a guy right now who is setting up a, a Wi-Fi streaming cartridge for his original Game Boy. I'm like, mm -hmm. mm, nice. Well done. And you see people like, I'm going to get my Amiga online and slowly watch a BBS load. I'm like, hey, you know what? It's dumb, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the effort. Maybe, maybe Amiga's too old and you want to take one of these modern x86 systems out on the internet now yeah so this is a new web browser for the disk operating system called the microweb web browser and this just makes all my vintage computer collecting wait, wait, that wait, wait, much wait, Jill, better Jill, 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 come on quit messing. it sounds like you're about to tell people about a web browser for us. that'd be silly Yes, it is actually. But the big news here is that MicroWeb is made specifically to run on older 8088 16-bit class machines in the disk operating system. So yes, so this is this is this will run on on Linux through an emulator, but it's it's made natively for DOS. <laughs> so, uh, and to to run MicroWeb, all you need is a 16-bit 8088 processor, like in the original IBM PC or XT, which I have in my collection, so I'm looking forward to playing with this. A CGA, EGA, VGA, or Hercules-compatible graphics card, a network interface, 640K RAM is desirable, and a mouse is optional. And for now, is text only. There is no HTTPS, CSS, or JavaScript support. But that may come in the future. But it, it, that little kid, that, that computer may not have the power to run uh, uh, CSS or JavaScript too well. But 
it, it might, it might in the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a different time when, when you think about it. They, yeah. they even make the point of, especially with the um, SSL, like, yeah, I mean, that, that would just break everything if you were trying to push yeah. that through the CPU at the time. I am a little curious. I'm, I'm looking at the um, command line options. And they have VGA mode, but it's limited to 640 by 480. Come on, I, I want I want that eight eight hundred by six hundred crispness on my thirteen inch monitor. That's really like twelve point two inches uh-huh. because that's how we used to measure monitors back in the day. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you kids with your accurate yeah. monitor sizes when you buy things. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of funny because I remember putting an eight hundred by six hundred monitor monitor on my XT. And it ran okay. You had to have a really good video card <laughs> to get that resolution. But um, I did. I remember I had, oh boy, I had a Hercules card. I had a Rainbow run- Runner, a Sang 4000. They, they, oh boy. Yeah, they would make that machine much better. <laughs> now, so. One of the things I'm genuinely, if you're trying to do this on a DOS machine, like legit um, network connection, mm-hmm. getting, uh, yeah. hmm. Hmm. The token ring is a thing. I'm yeah. to go. Okay, I'll plug that into my token ring router. Um, yeah. See, there, there's problems here. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming you that can get. Yeah, you can get aftermarket interface. Get you know, Ethernet ISA cards. Yeah, yeah, and um, they actually there. Th- there's a couple people that make. Uh, uh, make one specifically for the, the 8088s that run a little little better than your standard uh, um, extended ISA Ethernet card. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? That, that still sounds so much better than... Then we're going to take this box and plug it into this box through this cable and this, and look at that BBS. Lo- yeah. Man. More power to you, but okay. This this is fun. I'm, I'm going to stick with links. I'm going to stick with, stick with links. Yeah. But I, I was, critically break I something on my that. box to the point, but still have the save that saving thread of uh, internet connectivity. I'm like, whew, okay, there's yeah. a way out of this. And um, but yeah, this is neat. I just wanted to throw it in, and it's open no, source. That's really now, cool. Not the neatest <laughs> thing, because 2016 was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. Somebody decided to walk out, and they're like, man, this Minecraft game, pretty interesting. But you know, just making these blocks a little boring. I'm going to build a CPU inside of it. And the internet, rightfully so, lost their mind. They're like, look at this. This thing's functioning. It was like a one-bit CPU. And it was an amazing, an amazing feat. That's so mm-hmm. 2016, though. We can do better in amazing. 2022. <laughs> in fact, we can build a functioning CPU using a modular synthesizer. And that's exactly what Catif has done. A CPU implemented in an analog modular synth. That's right, VCV, Rack, if you're wondering. Road is red. It's amazing. On Twitter, explaining mm-hmm. how all of this works. We're talking straight up registers, um, fetch, clock, decode, you name it. And with VCV, knowing how this works, if you don't, I'm just doing this a very quick mention to show it off. If you're curious, go start reading into this because this thing kind of works. It's setting up an actual clock for this thing using VCAs and uh, just the creativity that went into this, demonstrating register banks, immediate values, the ALU. Replicary adders and mm. just like that. This is my kind of crazy, is all this is. Yeah. Um, nothing but that's really awesome. A bunch <laughs> of love. It, I, it, I can I can be quiet while you're talking. Go ahead. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh the my return vis- video had frozen. So uh yeah, a little issue there. <laughs> so what's really cool is uh explaining on Twitter, um, Kate. The creator um, said, remember the lines here are polyphonic audio. I'm using them to carry eight bits each. Multi-channel attenuverters make for a handy way to set a byte. So it's it, it, if you're in the audio world and if you've ever played with a modular synthesizer like I have back in the uh, 80s, uh, this is it, it really is amazing that <laughs> she created a CPU <laughs> with this technology. It's awesome. <laughs> it's uh man, I repurposing things, just just that that little spark of infra- information. And of course, when you ask someone, like, why did you do this? It goes cool. And mm-hmm. done. Done. Valid answer. Yeah. 
keep on <laughs> being you. Now, uh, if you want to help us keep on being us, you can do that by becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we finance this crazy little experiment that we do where we just show up and honestly say what we want. And all the other stuff mm-hmm. like interfacing Linux, I do a bunch of guides and stuff like that. We got a gaming show that we've been doing for almost 10 years now, older than Steam on Linux. So, you know, we're, we're the old guard. We're like, rrr, rrr, we're grumpy. Not really. We have a good time. We appreciate Linux in all of its <laughs> forms and fashions. And a couple of live streams during the week. But it's a new year. We got a gang of new people. We got to think this week, oh, Joe. We sure do. So Turnover is a new Death Note. Thank you so much, Turnover. A death Note. We have. A death Note. We yeah. need to explain. We got like little tears, man. If you got like a buck yeah. or something like that. We got Cherlings, Death Notes, Sea Monsters, and everything comes with a little bonus. So we pretty much just give everything. I've had more mm-hmm. than one person like, you give way too much away for free. And I'm like, I know I do. But that's kind of the point, man. Uh, get access in to our Discord along with it. We do four extra hours of content a month, pre pre super shows. And if you're wondering about what's going on, like movie reviews, behind the scenes stuff, that's all there in podcast and video format. But Death Notes get access to our show notes mm-hmm. each yeah, week show notes. as we're typing them. You get yeah. to creep, you get to participate. Be like, oh, excuse <laughs> me, uh, I got something to chime in on that. And that usually makes its way to the show. Thank you, Turnover. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's it's always nice turnover no to get problem. suggestions <laughs> suggestions for our news are, are, stories. Are you telling me to try harder? Aww, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So we have also a new patron, uh, JPX, and we have M Axius, who's a new patron, and Mir uh, did a did a Twitch resub. And Massive Oni did a Twitch resub. Woof, we got a lot. And we still have Foxy to thank. <laughs> what did Foxy, what did one Michael inflict upon you? Oh, so Foxy sent me the the game Another World, the 20th anniversary edition on Steam. And it is one of my favorites I used to play on my Amiga and in DOS. So that's, it, it was, it's actually but one of my favorite games, Foxy, one of my favorite very, classic games. I watched a little, like <laughs> a mini doc and I went down a little mini rabbit hole on that on how that was utilizing the Blitter chip and the Amiga. Mm. A very fascinating yeah. game for its time. A one person job too. Yeah. I have run the original under Lutris um, using the Amiga port and uh, that runs beautifully as well. Thanks to our very own Strider, Matthew, creator of Lutris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, what did? Yeah. yeah, he got. Didn't didn't Foxy give uh, you a game too, Ven? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he gifted us all games for Christmas. I'm a, I'm all a rush with uh, like I got a bunch of games. I gave a bunch of games um, away. Santa Ven struck after uh, holidays was over. I kind of right. like you get this game, you get this game, you get this game. So. Uh, thanks for everybody just sharing and all this fun stuff, letting us do what we do. We hope you enjoy it. Stick around for your names mm-hmm. in the credits. Uh, we got Amazon wish list. We just get a whole support thing. If, if it's your jam, if not, that's cool too. Just come say hi. And, um, we got a bunch of stuff planned for 2021. One thing we don't have planned is a slice of pie image. Cause I just realized it didn't load it. John. Oh, that's okay, Vin. We'll have to. <laughs> We've had so many. Maybe we we could talk about the Christmas one that looked like it had uh, Skittles on it. <laughs> so. it almost as diseased as this pie case, but we're going to give this a quick mention before we get out of here because we always like to include something Raspberry Pi related at the end of the show. Yeah. Setting up a Raspberry Pi is your home meta coin. Let's quit trying to make the metaverse thing a real. I remember VRML. Yeah, Go away. I know. Metaverse server for your <laughs> VR here. headset. Well, step one, you're going to need a uh, man. That is that is green. That thing that thing is allergic to black lights. Yeah, uh, it's Raspberry Pi. Okay, here's another very thing. Raspberry Pi four B, the eight gigs. Very rare these mm-hmm. days. Trying to get hold of one. About the only place you can find them is inside of Kit, but. This is how to go mm-hmm. through an entire development setup for VR with a Raspberry Pi, like setting up the server and all this. This is completely outside of my wheelhouse, but I wanted to ah. give it an engine because I know somewhere there's used to be some pictures. Here we go. This will walk you through the entire thing, including yeah, using very a, good instructions. Arptis, mm-hmm. Debian Bay. I didn't know about Arptis. I have to go. Risk oh, yeah. a Raspberry. 
man. Mm-hmm. I don't, but we're going to go, I guess, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is really <laughs> heavy on the pie. But yeah, you can walk through all of this. And apparently there's an entire stack you'd eat for the Raspberry Pi Metaverse server. Um, yeah. You know, lamp stack. A lamp, lamp yeah. stack. Yeah. They're not <laughs> by four beat. This is going to get to the good part. Of, oh, man, this does go all the way into it. Come on, picture. You do the thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We want to see the pictures in the metaverse. This is or, a, okay. Uh, hey, there's our- your <laughs> setting up UFW, sudo apt install, XRP. Okay, here we go. Things you will now have to configure a laptop. You'll need a VR headset, router, uh, registered domain name. Okay, I got to really read into this because of VR meta server. Do port uh, advanced mm-hmm. DNS table, address of gateway, configuring a patch. So what do you do with this though? This is, this is like the end game. Cause I'm, oh. I, I am 100% like, look at something that's like, that's neat, but I never stopped to think. So what's the point? Cause I, I, I'm me. I'm like, I don't care about the point. Well, it's all you the can, adventure. It's, it's, it's like you can make a VR chat is very, very uh, popular right now. And you can make your own VR chat universe with it where you bring in a group of friends and you can all interact with each other in um, the 3D world or the metaverse. And yeah, then it does it does bring back memories of Vermal <laughs> or VRML back from back in the day. But this is huh, Vermal, but in the modern day. <laughs> and But using a VR headset, which is really cool. And yeah, so you can talk to each other, interact with each other. You know, you can... Um, They'll they'll probably have avatars you can make just like you do in VR chat. I mean, you can make your own avatar for your VR presence. <laughs> That's wild. So I just I just look at it as a, a the new age of chat rooms, really, because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like communicating with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. Yeah, <laughs> but it it's fun. It's it's a good use of your VR headset when you're not you know, playing the few games that are available for it. <laughs> so a lot, a lot's going to happen. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> always interested in to see what comes of it in its current state. I mean, to me, I'm more impressed that you can set up something like this on a raspberry Pi instead of like a stack of SGI boxes. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. Actually <laughs> really amazing. The res that the new raspberry Pi is also powerful enough to run <laughs> To run this and to run the the 3D models required and That's everything. There. Yeah, and link in the show notes. Yeah. If anybody wants to tango with this or you're working on something like this or anything remotely related, send us a note. Head over to Linux Gamecast. We got a contact page. Smash that or you can just leave yeah. something. You know, hit me up on Twitter or on Pager and any place that I am and uh, let me know. I'd be glad to see it. We'll probably even get you on the show or something like that. But Mm-hmm. We're running long, Jill, because you know what I got to do? Okay. I got to run this entire show through an analog <laughs> computer, man. Oh, it's going to take a while. I got to do it in but real But it should time. sound warm. It should sound warm in the end. <laughs> if, right? if it sounds warm, I did it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, not not joking. Um, yes, Apex would consider that a defective product if it Added. This is why people send them back because people are like, oh, I'm going to add some mojo to it. It's like, no, the whole point is not to do that at all. It's just to make everything better. But we hope you have yeah. a great rest of your week. You make everything better. And uh, I'll be back. Jordan will be back tomorrow with Cybertruck 2017 or whatever he's playing. And um, mm-hmm. he seems to be having mm-hmm. a good time in that. I try to pop in if I get a chance. And uh, Friday, 730, head over to Twitch, smash that schedule button, fam. And uh, that's where I'm going to be with everybody and we're going to be doing like a little points race thing and uh track mania to stadium more info on that in our discord in the announcements tab yay hop in there if you don't i mean if you're a patron or if you're a twitch sub link your account hop in that's where we're at the other six days a week you can hang out with a hundred or so of us just kind of chilling out that's where all the cool people ended up being yeah <laughs> until <laughs> then we'll see you next week yeah bye everyone love you Oh, thank you for joining us in the live stream. Lawnmower Pie, that's what we need. Sentient Lawnmower. Oh, and the level code one, welcome. Gamatron, Steve Husband's in there. My husband, of course, Artharin, and Fox Dog. I don't know. Mirrors in there. Steve's husband can be taken away. It's like, oh, so you're Steve's husband? Yeah, (laughs) Mr. Alert. (laughs) For those of you that, no, 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 Steve Husband, well, 
For those of you that listen to LWW, you know that Steve Husband is actually my husband. <laughs> That's why he's named Steve Husband in chat. Because <laughs> I got him to come into the Linux Gamecast uh, chat. It was then IRC uh, many years ago. <laughs> And Joel was like, people need to know. I don't want anyone yeah. thinking anything other than. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Thanks for showing up. And again, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>